Hi everybody, welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo, North Dakota State, set for its regular season home finale. Could be home finale of the 2023 season, as they'll welcome in Southern Illinois, the Salukis off a loss to South Dakota, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, we have not been in this position in a long time, my man. 13 years since the Bison have lost this many regular season football games. And everything up in the air really is. The Bison go 2-0, and comfortably make it. 1-1, one and one, may have to sweat it out. 0-2, oh and, and they're done. That's the, the wild, pr wild pr position yeah. that this team is in right now. Yeah, pretty simple. Haven't seen this situation, which is really remarkable if you think about it, that the Bison in the FCS playoffs, remember back in 09 and, and then 2010, and, and they made the playoffs for the first time. Yeah. And you're thinking, wow, this is a pretty cool thing. And then here we are in 2023, yeah, it's been a while since we've seen this kind of a season. <laughs> Here it is now. Yeah. It's coming down. It's playoff season right now. It is mid-November, and the playoffs have started. And it begins this weekend with the Southern Illinois team that's smarting come off a loss to, to South Dakota. And on the Bison side of things, from what Manance just told us, they're they're relatively healthy. They're yep. in, in a position where when they have taken the ball away, it comes in clumps. They don't have any takeaways in the three losses. Maddox even alluded to it, you know, there's frustration with him, frustration with administration. I thought that was interesting to hear that. Frustration from fans. It's it's evident apparent. But I'll say this, Colpack. Bill Parcells always used to say, you are what your record says you are. They're six and three. They've earned every bit of that in my mind. Yeah, I, I don't see where the, I don't this isn't a seven and two team. No. And this is certainly not an eight and one team. Or a nine and zero oh team by any stretch. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. And yep. I will but still this team's a good FCS team, people. I mean, they're pretty good. When you take in the count of, of a top 25 and they've been you know, ranked 10, 11, 12 for the most part, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's just not the outstanding great teams we've seen in the past. And at some point, you're going to run out of NFL quarterbacks and NFL offensive linemen and have to retool and not everybody pans out. Now, where do they go from here? Correct. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, is this acceptable to the fan base? Probably not. But I see it as a reporter that you're not going to go 11 and 0 every year. I mean, you're just not. I think for the, I don't think for the players and the coaching staff is acceptable either. No. That's probably the more important thing right now is what they have seen on the field, whether it be undisciplined, whether it be one part of the game completely breaking down, whether it was defensively against South Dakota, defense special teams against UND, defense and special teams against South Dakota State. It's been a variety of things that have led to this record so far. Well, and and. South Dakota State made the winning plays. There's a tip pass yep. for an interception. That's a winning play. The highlight before that was a great punch out by linebacker yep. Adam Bach, Adam Bach yep. on, on Tim Merrick Williams, recovered it. That's a winning play. Yep. Now here's a here's a play. Raja, you know, pretty good return here. And and, and this is a maybe one of the winning plays yeah. to set up something. But the bison got nothing out of this. Winning teams do not get nothing out of return right. like that. They had the field goal blocked in there, and that's why I brought the point on Hot Mike this morning that this team resembles so much of that three and eight team you alluded to earlier. It feels the same. Two and nine yeah, and I, I think I brought I think I brought that up in Hot Mike yeah. that this the season, although the record's obviously much better yeah. than the three and eight season of two thousand nine, it has a similar yes. feel in the fact they're just not making those kind of plays that you need to be a uh, top flight team where the talent level is here and execution is here to me that's where the differentiation is with this team so far. i'm not sure the talent level is is that I, much they still have, i think they still have good talent i'm i what i'm saying in reference to where their talent is to where their execution I okay guess, that's okay what I'm I, I see i not, not compared records Correct. To, yep and i think that's where they have i think some pretty good talent and it's just not on the same page right now yeah uh, there's no question yeah. about it and again uh you got two games to go yep you, you can really write a pretty good season here. There's still a potential path to Frisco. As funny as it sounds, there is. There there's is. A, yeah, there's a potential there to get a seed as well because you have two ranked teams in front of you. You win these two games, including one on the road. That certainly changes the whole tenor of this, this entire season, frankly. Well, remember in 2010 when the Bison made the playoffs and they had to go out to Montana State. Yep. And for uh, you thought, okay, maybe Montana State would have the edge in that. Bison absolutely just yep. flattened them yep. in Bozeman. And that team just really, I think, had a slide up toward the end. Probably should have beat Eastern Washington. We all know what happened there. Had a chance probably to win a title yeah, there if you think the, about the it. The pathway was there. If, yep. if, if things, yep. if Villanova would have been at home. And, and the final against a, a Delaware team that was good but not great. 
And, th and that's why it starts this weekend mm -hmm. with Southern Illinois. And the Salukis come in. Exact that's why I asked Nick Hill in, our, in the availability we had with him earlier today. This is almost like looking at two teams in the mirror. Salukis are 6-3. and three. They're also 3-3 three and three in the Valley. They lost a disappointment. The, the games that they have lost, they got blown out by Youngstown. They lost a tight game to the Jacks, and they couldn't find the end zone against South Dakota, which we'll show you in a second. They have, I think, really good talent, but they've also not performed in every game this season. Well, their offense has not performed yeah. well against the better teams, and that's evident last week against South Dakota. This team's really good defensively. Yep. I mean, look at the stats. Scoring defense, fifth in the country. Rushing defense, third in the country. Total defense, yep. third in the country. Bison are going to have trouble putting up to, uh, getting into the 20s. I mean, they're going to have to really play well. You can't turn it over on no. these guys. That's that's the thing where I think the, the script is flipped with SIU because I remember going to this game last year. We'll, we'll talk about the 48-year-old Nick Baker in a second, but you knew SIU could put up points. How good were they defensively? Now it seems it's the other way around where they're legit on the defensive side of the ball and they don't have the dynamic playmakers on the offense that they used to. Well, sometimes you don't know what you're going to have when you have a team and a program that relies so much on the portal. Correct. They've, they've gone all in on the portal. Yep. That's their deal. Where NDSU and South Dakota State, by and large UND, they've stayed with the high school recruiting and, and developed players. SIU has gone the other way. They're heavy into the portal. Sometimes you, you hit it and sometimes you don't. And maybe it, they've, they've hit it defensively yeah. and developed some guys defensively too. I mean, their safety, I think, is P.J. Jules is oh, fantastic. Yep. That guy has 10 tackles for lost yardage, and he's a safety. I mean, this guy can fill the run. And Matt Entz brought up Ubiah Steed by name. Keep an eye on him. Another safety that's going to be at the line of scrimmage, number seven. He's going to impact the game in a big-time way on Saturday. We've seen Nick Baker for five years. They know the calling card. He's going to make plays like you just saw. He's going to run around. He's going to nearly be down on the ground and throw something sidearm on third and seven and get a first down, especially against a Bison defense that has mm -hmm. is had issues with quarterbacks like that. That's a huge challenge coming up on Saturday. I'm not Saturday. saying he's Pat Mahomes, but he has that style of Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Just you know, throws from all different uh -huh. angles and, and running all over the place and scrambling. Now he's 5'9". Pat Mahomes is what six three. Yeah, he, uh, Doesn't have the arm strength. That's what the comparison's but, at in there. <laughs> but but not in the style of play. No, I mean, correct. And, 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 and relatively speaking, NDSU's defense is going to have to contend with this Pat Mahomes like guy who's just going to be uh, really tough to get a couple hands on him. That's the thing. I mean, we saw it. Baker tore up the Bison in 2021 in that game in Carbondale. Heck, first even start. Last, that was his first start. And even last year, the game in Carbondale, he was still elusive. That game, the Bison got up 21-10, yeah. I'd say, in the fourth quarter. And Baker was still making plays to make that a game until the final horn went off. Yeah, and the Bison defense isn't exactly lighting the world on no. fire either. And I think that's where their deficiencies are mainly this year. You talk about some turnovers. But overall, defensively, it's just not the NDSU teams we've seen. Still good statistically. I mean, they're not bad. It's 19th in scoring defense, but you know, they, usually they're in the top five. Well, and the crazy part, they're usually eight, they look they're like eighth in total defense. That's the crazy part about it. That's the that's the insane part of how they play. But I'll throw this caveat to you: when they have not forced a turnover against the games they have lost mm -hmm. against South Dakota State, South Dakota, and UND, they have to do that this weekend. They've got to get the ball away. Well, from easy, easier said than Correct. done. I, and I thought South Dakota State. How do how do you create turnovers? You're, you're, you get quick to the ball. Yep. You're first to the ball. You're you're more you're strong. You're powerful and you're athletic and you have that spring and, and you get there and you yep. create the turnovers rather than just trying to hope to make the tackle. There's a difference there. Yep. And we've not seen that for the most part of the Bison defense uh, so far this year. Also, it is senior day. Uh, there's going to be 13 seniors acknowledged before the game. Now, that does not mean that's all the guys done. Colpack and I were just going through the list of guys. I mean, there's at least another, what, 10 to 12 guys that have the opportunity either to be done or to come back for next season. That's something we don't know as we sit here recording this on Monday. We may not even know, Jeff, to, for a month from now, depending on what these guys are going to do. Yeah, welcome to the world of modern college football. It's <laughs> called roster management yeah. now. And so if NDSU, they have 35 seniors on the roster, right. 13 are declared, they're going to be at least 22. Yes. Of that 22, we can think five or six, a handful, have decided they're coming back. There, there's a good 10, 12 we don't know yeah, about. Yeah, I, I have at least five I know that have verbally said it to me that they are coming back. Now, again, that means nothing. It's like a verbal commitment right now. You can change on that between now and and basically January 1, and you throw in the part that November, what is it, night portal. 20th, two weeks from today, is when the portal opens, and that could add a whole other level into what the roster looks like for now, the season. NDSU is under no obligation to offer a scholarship to a six-year player. 
that is up to the coach. That's a coach's discretion. Now, I don't think Matt Ants has done that yet. Nope. And he said, I think he's, he alluded to that, that he has not taken away a scholarship from a kid coming back for a six year. I don't, that may be part of the equation now. We'll see. I would say those conversations probably Kolpak have to have. Yeah. Like they, what I always was told, like we, we told you we'd honor five years. We've done five. Maybe it's time. Yeah, that's fair. That's right. fair. Yeah. I mean, that, that I, because people don't know, the coaches have always said, you know what, your pathway to the field is blocked as a junior. Maybe time for you to look somewhere else. That conversation still happens, even if it doesn't matter if you're a you know fifth or sixth year guy. You know, we, we've taken some social media hit at Twitter that South Dakota State and NDSU yeah. have the same amount of veterans. Yep. Well, they do. NDSU or South Dakota State has 10 six year players. But here's the difference. All start. Yeah, I was all say, are really productive. All are really guy, good. Right. The impact guys of those are are night and day. They are like this. And I'll use this again. It's this and this within the impact guys at South Dakota State and NDSU six year guys. It just is. Yeah. And you know what was flipped about that? Two years ago when the Bison won the national championship, their fifth and six year guys were all impact. They were the dudes. Back. They could yep. not they were the dudes. discount that. Two other games to look forward to this weekend besides the game that we have in Fargo. The game in Vermilion is awfully interesting. UND and South Dakota. Coyotes got the huge win in Carbondale. UND has never beaten South Dakota in the Division One era at the Dakota Dome. That's a huge... USD's played its way, I think, back into the seed conversation. Well, five now. teams are six and three. Right. So here we go. I mean, somebody's <laughs> going to get weeded out here in the last two weeks. And Northern Iowa is trending upwards. I'll just say that. They have a game at Missouri State. I don't know if that's a trap game, but I will say this. The Bears traditionally in Springfield play you and I super, super hard. Oh, you... Are you I'm not calling anything yet. Calling I'm just it? telling you that trip that might be a tricky game. Uh, for the team from Cedar Falls. We'll find out coming up on Saturday. Big week of coverage on tap from Jeff, Eric Peterson, Mike McFeely, and myself and Logan Campbell. Don't forget, of course, we've got the game for you on Saturday morning beginning at 10 a.m. with Bison Game Day, then the game following at 2.30 between North Dakota State and Southern Illinois. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. Latest edition of the Bison Video Vlog brought to you by Gate City Bank.